ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet again another episode of the Citizen Chat Show, where we discuss pertinent issues affecting the citizenry, that is you. And to discuss this week, we saw a lot of bikery uh, from the Forum for Democratic Change. And uh, interestingly, as you can predict on the light today, is uh, on Council Biamgisha <laughs> Moses. Uh, and we saw a lot of issues last week, uh, you know, with in Naguru, uh, sorry, Naja Nankumbi, a press conference, and then an informal meeting held in, in Zambia, I believe, uh, by two different, I don't know if it has matured into a point of factions. Uh, we will get to know during the show. Secondly, our dear citizenry, we have another issue that came up. Uh, during the week, which is that our army, the Uganda People's Defense Forces, uh, set up a security company. Uh, it was an issue of debate in Parliament, and we will be listening from our very capable panelists uh, their opinions on that very matter. And to discuss these two issues today, um, I'll once again uh, a very capable panel, uh, and I'll introduce starting from the far right, as always. Uh, Major Paula Awich, who is a double director at the National Resistance Movement, uh, Director External Services, and the Interim Director, Legal Affairs. You're most welcome. Thank you. I'm Substantive Director, External Affairs. Yes. Thank you. And you're most welcome to the Thank show Thank you. Today. Greetings. Yes. Council Biamgisha Moses, I believe you're very prepared today. I see the notebook. <laughs> <laughs> but you're also most welcome. Biamgisha Moses is a lawyer and also an FTC, I would say seasoned FTC mobilizer. You're you forget welcome. I'm also a lawyer or director legal. I think you trans transcend. But I say director legal. So <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. thank you very much for thank you very much, our viewers, and thank you very much, my brother and colleagues. Yes. Thank you. Yes, and we have Dr. Ekwaro Obuku. You're most welcome today. Today you're sandwiched by four lawyers, uh, which I believe you'll manage capably, but you're most welcome. I'm, I'm starting law school this year or next year, yes. just to fit. Yeah. But I've also carried my notebook, <laughs> <laughs> like castle, so that we can compare notes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're most welcome. Thank you. Uh, doctor is the uh, immediate former president of the Uganda Medical Association. Past. Yes, past president, but also an upcoming political analyst. Correct. Yes, ah. you're most welcome. Thank you. Yeah, and then the evergreen <laughs> Dr. Sarah Birete, executive director, Center for Constitutional Governance. You're most welcome. Thank you, and the good afternoon viewers. Yes. Yes, uh, our dear viewers, straight to the point, and as, as you can predict, we'll start from council Moses Biamgisha. Council, what is happening at the Forum for Democratic Change? Thank you very much, and I'm happy to be here. Yeah. First of all, I must say that uh, I'm emotionally not at peace today. I'm struggling to remain strong. I'm like a man who has been rejected by a girlfriend mm. because of what is happening. Uh, party headquarters. But uh, don't worry, feel strong, feel strong. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the one who <laughs> emphasizing with me. <laughs> the trouble cause. But uh, mm. for for the benefit of our viewers mm. and uh, to try and put the happenings at the FDC or in the FDC into perspective. Yeah. I would like to particularly focus my attention on the issue of political party financing and the cost of elections. Mm. Uh, viewers and colleagues, a political party like FDC, mm. on the first day of an election, a presidential or a general election, yeah there is a lot of money that is spent. Mm. Uganda has got 353 constituencies. Yes. 
And an MP to be nominated on an FDC ticket for a constituency pays 3 million shillings. Mm. That money translates to 1.59 billion shillings. Yes. That's a lot of money. We have got 146 districts. Mm. Uh, for an ROC5 chairperson, uh, I, I mean, those districts, they are women member of parliament, women, women MPs representing districts. Mm. So that's 146 districts times 3 million shillings. It translates to 438 million shillings. Mm. Because the FDC party has to nominate <coughs> a woman every district. Yes. You've got, uh, on those same districts, you've got ROC5 chairpersons. Mm. Their nomination fee is 200,000. It translates to 29 million shillings. I want us to total up the figures. Mm. You've got 2,184 sub-counties. Yes. At every sub-county, we nominate two candidates. Mm. Councillors. Now, that is 218, 400,000, uh, 218 million shillings, mm. 400,000 shillings. Yes, yes. And finally, we've got 10,595 parishes. Mm. At parish level, we nominate two candidates. Yes. Now, when you get, uh, and the nomination fee is 20,000. Yes. When you get 20,000 times 10,595 uh, parishes, you get uh, 211 uh, million 900,000. Mm. Mm. When you put this money together, it's already close to billion shillings. Yes. That is money that a political party has to begin with mm. on the on a nomination day. Mm. And moreover, Usually, a party like FDC, you just don't send candidates for nomination. You will have given them posters. So usually, those candidates send uh, their, their photos at the headquarters. Yeah. And the headquarter printer has got to run for them posters. Or perhaps secure a private service provider at NASA Road mm. to print posters. Mm. From, or, from, from the money. From the money yeah. that the party has got to raise. Yes. So... All of that is happening amid a scenario where the regime has tactfully and technically restricted political party fundraising. Mm. Right now, today, a political party like FDC cannot hold a meaningful fundraising. If you announced, uh, like, let's say you are having a fundraising dinner at Serena or Hotel Africana mm. and you are selling cards, you will even find people saying, me, I can send you 100000 but I don't want to be seen to have contributed money. Mm -hmm. It is difficult to raise money from even those that have it. Yes. But also, the party members, being Ugandans, are part of a, of a population that is heavily impoverished by the regime. Yes. So the people are so poor to even raise money. Mm. When you are a leader of the party, like FDC, you find yourself very vulnerable. Mm. That on one side, there is a strong need for this huge amount of money yes. that you need to raise as the party leadership. Mm. And yet, the regime is also deliberate on ensuring that all gaps that where you would be able to raise money are closed. Mm. Previously, I think about seven years ago, we used to have funders like DGF, like what? A number of organizations. Yeah. But now they can't. It is so serious to the fact to the extent that even the money that you can raise from around the uh, from outside the country, mm. from a single source, as a political party is restricted. There is a restriction on how much you can even raise mm. from outside the country. Mm. Now, the little money that comes from electoral commission is not enough. It is just a drop in the ocean to be able yes. to satisfy this, this, this thirst yes. uh, for, for money. Mm. The need for money uh, to be able to run a political party. Yes. You end up paying a few staff on the secretariat, uh, have a few activities here and there, and the money is done. Mm. 
that situation puts a party leader in a vulnerable position. Mm. And he ends oh. up having to carry a basket. Mm. And he doesn't mind whoever drops in for as long as he can be able to deal with, with this. But, but um, one of the things you normally criticize NRM about is monetizing election. And Indeed. Is, and of course the opposite being you run, you, you mobilize based on ideas. Isn't it then a failure of ideas at FDC to be able to run the party with limited funds? You see, <laughs> ideas, you have to go out and sell them. Mm. Going out to sell those ideas means being able to hold district meetings, hold rallies, mm. hold what? Again, those are not things that are easily done here. Mm. You can't meaningfully engage in the marketplace of ideas as a political party. Mm. So that maybe you are able to appear appearing yes. and attract the support of the possible funders. That still is also that, That's possible. a very interesting uh, yes. point. So, about, yeah. so we have to appreciate that all of that is a construction mm. of the state and the regime that is intended to preserve the status quo. Mm. Because when he fails, when he fails, there would be competitors in the politics. Mm. Then he remains unchecked. But on the other hand, he also doesn't want to, he doesn't want them to, to die completely. He wants some sort of legitimacy. Mm. So he has got to have, uh, if he's not, one way he can fund a political party, mm. he can himself send in some money into a political party so that it can compete in a, in a general election. And so his win is legitimized. Mm. He can even permit a few members of those political parties to go through for as long as he knows he's still, still uh, uh, in charge of the parliament. Yes. So the, uh, the, whatever is happening within the FDC party today are the direct consequence of what we have found ourselves in as a political party that, that is seeking to unseat a regime that is also hell-bent on preserving itself. But, but Council, just on behalf of the citizens, one could also debate that for over 15, 20 years when Besige was at the helm of FDC, there wasn't such a case of, and yet the money was still limited. There wasn't a case uh, or a suspicion good. of money being transferred from... Very, from, very good. Now, yeah. As you notice, we have got this problem now mm. after this 2021 general election. Yes. The 2021 general election was very unique for us as a party. Yes. Our supporters had all along been used to the face of Dr. Kiza Besiger. Yes. In 2016, we managed to drag him into an election because some elders within the party prevailed over him and said, no, 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 you can't abandon us at this stage. Please offer yourself as a candidate. Yes. But in 2021, he put us on a notice early in the time over three years mm. before the election. Yes. And he said, this time, even if you do what, I am not available. Yes. And so the party kept <clears throat> hoping, the leadership kept hoping that they might convince him. Mm. They kept sending, sending in directions. But at the end of the day, he, he refused completely. Yeah. And at the time when the party realized that the man was not going to contest, it was only a few weeks to the nomination. Mm. Then there was a crisis of who goes in, who goes in. Mm. Whoever they would, they would knock on his door, he would say, no, 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 me, I want to go and secure my constituents. Mm. Me, I want to do that. Me. So nobody was available. Mm. And then Amriyat as a party leader, I think he reasoned that, uh, well, we... I have to go in. Yes. So as a party leader, he, he, he stepped in out of the crisis, like yeah. it was being explained. Mm. And so we get, uh, we, we get Amriyat coming in mm. when the party is not prepared at all. Yes. Like, you know, when I want to, to when you have a wedding. Yes. And I play, you have yours soon. When you have a wedding. Yes. <laughs> when I want to make a very big contribution. Yeah. Sometimes I may want you to notice that I've contributed because maybe when I'm also having a wedding, I want you to contribute to me. Yes. So 
for your family to, uh, to assume that they can start to organize a wedding when we don't even know who of their sons is going to wed mm. or who, which daughter they are going to marry. We've not had announcements in the church. We don't know. So the funders also want to know who exactly is going to be the candidate. Mm. Will he know us? Dr. Wesley used to share with us a story that there was a gentleman yeah. who, 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 who would be telling him that, you know what, doctor, for me, uh, please, when, when we are done with this, allow me to collect dues in, in, in this other market that we to buy the, 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 mm. the Owino. Yes, the Owino market. Yes. But that for me, allow me to collect dues in Owino market. That is all that I want. Mm. <laughs> He had his friends, basically. <laughs> so you can imagine. Yes. For him, he's saying, for me, my contribution, what I want, allow me to collect the news in the window market. Mm. So the people who <laughs> want to bring in finances, who would also want to know which person they are financing. Mm. So if as a party you have delayed to, to, to even uh, identify a candidate, mm. that is not possible. If as a party you have not undergone processes, for example, of establishing a, a campaign bureau. A campaign bureau is the planning unit of a candidate. That's where the strategies are developed. That's where the contacts are made of who can finance. That's where uh, views are collected to make a, a, a manifesto. So if you've not been able to establish a campaign bureau as, uh, as, as a party, mm. who is going to help to fundraise those monies? Because it's the campaign bureau that sits and says, who are, who are our good friends? Where can we send our proposal? So all of that was not there Yes. this time round. And like when Dr. Wessinger was there, because for Dr. Wessinger, he was already an established face. Mm. People knew him. He would just need to make one trip to London and he would raise enough money to nominate and pay posters on one trip. Yes. Something that did not happen this time round. So, but, but then something very concerning, uh, especially as an FDC member, is... What is the general standpoint of FDC members on this? Because now um, there's an allegation that money was transferred. Mm -hmm. And you've tried to rationalize why perhaps that happened. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you are trying to confirm. <laughs> you have created the context. Moved. You have created the context. Yeah. But FDC clearly needs to handle this thing very decisively. Because mm -hmm. much as money is necessary, this is something that can kill the spirit of, of the party, course. especially among young people. Of, who are already mm -hmm. moving away from the party. Indeed, I should have added that all of that need for money notwithstanding. Yes. Clearly, you cannot receive money from the person you hope you are, you are, you are seeking to unseat and expect that that money will not come uh, within the strings. Mm -hmm. I had some of our members asking our party leaders, yeah. if you receive the money from Museveni, mm -hmm. Museveni is not known to be giving without receiving. Mm. What, what did, did you he give him in exchange. in exchange for the money you received? Mm. Or what did you promise to do for him mm. in exchange for the money that you received? Yes. So, well, uh, issues of money are going to be confirmed, I think, in about a week's time because yes. uh, there is, a, there is a, uh, uh, an investigation that was going on. And the good thing is that the main whistleblower Dr. Kiza message has already appeared yes. before the committee. Yes. So we believe that uh, the report is going to come out indicating what happened. Although, of course, uh, behind doors, we, one can easily, we can easily share and, and say, we hear this, we hear this, but clearly, mm. everything will come out. And now, if the money came in, mm. there will, they will, they will be need to, they, to, the leaders will have to answer. Yeah. And part of the bickering that is going on is trying to put the leaders to task to explain yeah. what exactly transpired. Yeah. And if money was received, is it for taking back? Mm. <laughs> is it for, are you refunding? And if you're not refunding, what, how, what, what, how do you deal with this situation? Mm. Of course, at the end of the day, someone will have to pay for What price. was the exchange? Yes. <laughs> and we hope uh, FDC family deals with uh, uh, you know, this issue. It's pivotal. The only it's challenge now, the only challenge that the situation, the only challenge is that the situation that is unfolding is that as supporters question the leadership, mm. the leadership is running to the state to seek protection. Yes. So right now, the party leadership, Nandara and Damuriat, and the headquarters, 
is being protected against the members of the party. Mm. By who? Sorry. <laughs> I'm not the, I'm not the, okay. we, we will get back to we will get back to FCC. Major Pola, a few years back, um, your principal, uh, the president, stated that uh, soon there will be no opposition. <laughs> they will uh, eat when, them like samos. Yes. <laughs> Is this, you know, a manifestation of that prophecy? Of the samosa <laughs> feast. <laughs> because we have seen, um, we saw UPC, uh, you know, following that path. Uh, we saw DP last year with Norbert Mao signing a cooperation agreement. And now we are seeing FDC. Did uh, he sign? Oh, he has a draft in his hand. Uh, we saw a photo with, you know. <laughs> but, but then, uh, yeah, I mean, it, as a matter of, as a matter of principle, <laughs> um, half of the allegation they have to answer on receiving the money, but also, the other half is the the NRM or the the, the, the state, which, ap, ap, according to the allegations, appears to have extended some finances to this party. Are these deliberate actions to fulfill that prophecy, to eliminate opposition? Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we go to the exams and start with the easy question. Mm. And then go to the other one later. Doctor asked something about who is protecting mm. people at the FDC. I think uh, it could be answered simply that it's the police, the state, because <laughs> yes. the work of the police is to maintain law and order. For everyone. Such that if people are going to their discourse in Angenua, mm. they should dance in peace. Yes. If people are going in their garden, mm. they should dig in peace. Mm. If people are going to the churches, they should do in peace. Yes. So likewise, if people are going to the FDC for discussions and in party meetings, mm. they should be in peace. So it is right and fitting mm. that the police intervenes so that there's no breaking of the law. Yes. That party discusses its mat mat matters mm. fairly and uh, peacefully. Mm. So I think I start with that. Uh, answer the easier question first. Yes. The other question that you said was that the, our party chairman, the president, had said mm. that by given time, there will be no party, yes. no opposition. I would agree with that. And I've ever said it here. Mm. I've said here <laughs> that during the referendum, yes. me and Kakoza Mutari, we campaigned for the movement. Mm. I had said here before that political parties, it's not good. I said here, that during the NRM system, you could censure a minister and their list of ministers who were censured. Now you can't. Even if a minister walks from city square to parliament, we shall rubbish it that opposition bewitched him. Mm. Good enough, in the constitution, they say there are two political systems. Yes. There's a movement system and the multi-party system. Mm. If one is in power, the other one is in abeyance. So we have been... Uh, under the, the referendum that we held, we decided multi-party. <clears throat> but that is not a permanent situation. Mm. So should time come and situation warrants mm. and we, we, we decide otherwise through the right constitutional procedures, we can still have a movement system mm. because it is provided for in the constitu constitution. Mm. So for those of us who had campaigned for movement, though the referendum took that we go multi-party, we are still hopeful. And that is in line with what the president had said. But Major, what, what about the, the opinion that parties come with different ideas that keep refreshing our democracy and checking? Them? That is why we have it now. Mm. So, and the constitution says, if we have it now, the movement is in a bias. That is why we have it now, because we think parties come with different ideas. So we wait to see. But do you think that is true? That part is actually... It is least, true, least, and is it coming. is coming. Yeah, it is true. Yeah. Now, I want to say, with our history and current manifestation, yeah. our colleagues who say they're actually in opposition, they just hype for the purpose of winning a vote. Not the conviction and what you are saying, mm. that parties come with ideas. Mm. They're just like in a school debate, where it is easier to be on the opposition yes. than to be in the proposition. Mm. So it was worked for some people because they have curbed the constituency that if you go abusing and talking against the government, you get election, elected. 
but in reality, nobody has internalized the principle so, of the so party. So they, they have ideas, but not, we could say, ideologies. Yeah. So, mm. this is what is happening, and that's why it is happening like that now. Yeah. Because people just say, I can only use it as a vehicle to a destination, but mm. the principle and the belief is not there. And now it is starting to manifest. Mm. The other thing is that when you look at the laws of uh, uh, governing the elections, yeah. uh, my colleague says that the laws are maybe unfair in terms of the, the amount of money involved. Yeah. It's unfortunate that we can't get now to the genesis of the law, who said what. Mm. But this can be found out that even the members of the opposition actually advocated for this. You see, in international law, for example, these conventions, when you go and lift the veil, mm. you actually know how a particular provision came in place. For example, a child is anybody below 18. We can find out why it came. Yes. The government of Poland had said a child is anybody from 0 to 18. Yes. Vatican, which is a state in the UN, Vatican argued that if you say 0 to 18, it means you're actually legalizing abortion. It means a child of 8 months mm. can be terminated. Mm. So if we go into our legislations here, we'll yes. see that all parties accepted this. Now, they turn around to say the law is prohibitive, the law makes a burden to the parties. No. If anything, laws are not hard and frozen. We yeah. can amend it anyway. Yeah. So it shouldn't be a hiding ground. Okay? I, I was also surprised uh, my colleague said that... Uh, FDC had no candidate in 2021. They were actually looking for it. I wish we knew because we were over prepared. I didn't know that they were going for this. He's not ready. That is going to his constituency. I wish we knew because for us, we are very prepared. You would have given them a candidate. Eh? No, we would have listened maybe the, the control, concentration. <laughs> but we went in thinking it was serious. Mm. And now I'm just discovering many years. <laughs> That it wasn't that serious. <laughs> now, next time you don't have a... And that's what we're saying, that the parties are actually not serious. Mm. Imagine a big political party like FDC failing to get a candidate. Mm. But, but, so, but, but Major, mm. he, he said that uh, why, why they play this game of lack of money and all is because even in the marketplace of ideas mm. and philosophy and mm. ideology, they're mm. not given the space to visit you know, the country, discuss ideas, so that money doesn't become the... the the mm. prime, yes. No. Now, to show you that actually our members are not, our colleagues are not in a, <laughs> in for the principle, mm. okay? You remember the, the famous General Muntusi saying that because people were accusing Muntu mm. for being a mole, okay? Yes. But Muntu said, look, you people, you don't know what a mole is. Meaning, Muntu actually knew, okay? Mm. You see? Yes. What is he saying? If it is the will of God, mm -hmm. there is going to be a time when people will be shot, when they know who the more is. <laughs> mm. So are you confirming? So now, no, what it Mr. means, <laughs> with your what permission, it means eh? here is that... Uh, Mr. Moderator on that clip yes, with your yes. permission, are you confirming that you have agency in FDC? What I'm confirming is that members are not committed to the political ideals and parties. parties and that is why we still have in the constitution mm. two systems mm. that we shall fall back. And those of us who campaign against it, we still maintain that with a movement system, you'll have a better system. With a movement system, you will change some ministers. Without a movement system, you will never touch any minister, however wrong it could be. Mm. So, all those who are, who, are, who are positioning to be in opposition, I even wonder sometimes, mm. good enough Sarah from Weranyanyi doesn't abuse me. I always even wonder, now that you say you are in opposition <laughs> and you're abusing me, yeah. and yet I know, like Sunday will come one day, Tomorrow you will come. What will you do about mm. abusing me? Mm. Because all of them are just hyping to build a bigger image for a sale tomorrow. Mm. Imagine what Honorable Mao had said. Do you know the, the, the value that he built? Mm. Minister of Justice. I don't know what Sarah will get tomorrow. Sarah has also built us. Maybe tomorrow, what? GPT Speaker. So all, 
of them are just building to sell a bigger product tomorrow. Mm. So what is committed? And that's, that's why you see the bickering. Okay? Yes. Don't so, blackmail uh, our panelists. Not blackmail like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the yeah. issue in FDC now mm. is not that money was received. Mm. No. The issue is how has it been shared? That is why it is termed as you don't declare. There's no accountability. Have you ever heard anybody saying the money was wrong? Mm. No. They're saying it's okay for us to get money. After all, the survival. The issue is it was not shared. Mm. And they are calling it, you have not declared the source of the unknown money. And you have not brought accountability. If it is wrong, why do you want it declared? And why do you want it said? So that is now the issue. The issue is not whether or not money mm. was shared, I mean was got, but the issue is that money has not been shared properly. So, back to the statement of our national chairman. Yes. We still honestly believe that having parties at this stage in Uganda, and enough in Africa, is just being disruptive and mm. diversionary. Yes. And since in our constitution, we have provision for two systems. Mm. Like Muntu says, time will tell. Yes. We shall still get back. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Sarah Birete, we have a, a, a debate here. Um, on the one side, that other political parties have no ideas. and They, they have not formed ideologies. And you know, most people are just there as election you know, kafundas or shops to be able, election vehicles in uh, quoting Major Polar, you know, to be able to get to some positions. And then there's another point that uh, uh, Council Moses answered. Uh, to a question I raised where he said even in the marketplace of ideas they are not allowed to play. Now given the history of Uganda where we, we had a movement system for about 20 years uh, of course there were structural adjustment policies and then that led to a referendum and then the multi-party system. Do you think uh, you know political parties have ever been a, th a thing that the state believes in and is this a manifestation of what Paul is saying that uh, for them uh, political parties are mere disruption. You know, first I want to state clearly that uh, in a multi-party dispensation, mm. political parties are national democratic assets. Mm. And the country's democracy is as good as its political parties, which are vehicles for competition mm. for power. Mm. I have uh, taken note of the submissions of my co-panelists. Yeah. Uh, uh, Council Moses it, it was uh, clear on the <coughs> you know, commercialization of politics and the burden mm. that the political parties go through to raise funds, yes. given the legal, you know, legal limitations yes. existing in a country. Mm. And my friend, Afanda, which Paula is discussing, the, the, you know, the internal rift in FDC. Mm. In our culture, we say that uh, <clears throat> you, you cannot, uh, you know, when a cow dies, mm. you do not expect there would be enemies of a cow yes. to feel sad. Mm. So, and we say, like, put it clear in our fluent. Are you trying to say if this is... is uh, these are political competitors. No, uh, the way our uh, panda which is debating, yeah. is uh, debating with a tongue-in-cheek mm. in the chaos facing their competitor. Mm. Uh, and the uh, FDC... You know, giving credit, uh, giving, you know, cre credit where it's due. Mm. Since the re-establishment re of political parties, FDC mm. was the most credible party for a while. Mm. People have paid with their most money, credible opposition party. sacrifice, building that party, <coughs> within and outside FDC. <coughs> so the rifts within FDC are saddening yes. in terms of our democ democratic ecosystem. They mm. are very saddening. Mm. 
and is it just money i want to add that money is mm. one of the challenges but the first challenge is leadership mm. first is we have a, na- a not favorable mm. legal regime governing parties the limitations on fundraising the when you go to electoral laws we have pro- sources where nobody can get the money either for political or civic work mm. so when the fdc is faced with a challenge of money from an enemy source mm. i'm thinking that illegally if they manage to resolve mm. the, the, the current standoff then they need also to clear the list sources where it is prohibited to get mm. the money from mm. and that should include president museven and nrm mm. yeah mm. i don't see why anybody in fdc should go to nrm to get the money mm. first of all is the biggest elephant in the room is that even this money does not belong to nrm nrm abuses taxpayers money for their political work but even to go to correct this taxpayers money that mm. nrm abuses mm. should also be prohibited mm. in fdc structures yes because it compromises them and uh, uh, and like and of course the giver knew the exact intention or even the exchange for which that money was given mm. we have seen i think fdc is the third party to fall victim mm. of this the first part was upc and unfortunately the events at fdc mm. are repeating the exact script of upc takeover mm. with the jimea kena then as an accomplice mm. and and you remember jimea kena strongly actually physically fighting with Olaro Tunu at, yes. oh, at the there, House. there was a, f- a fist fight. <laughs> no, it was de- the exact script. Denying. They were going to add the elections, mm. internal elections. Mm. They disagreed yes. on, on the roadmap for elections. Yeah. Uh, Aken went and corrected man and police and took over and they even had the elections at gunpoint. They sort of declared himself. Tunu and other factions went to court. By the time court pronounces itself, the term is coming to an end. Jima Kena goes for another term. Mm. They get court orders. He bypasses them because he's guarded by police. People have got like three court orders mm. against Jimmy mm. Akena. But they are all ignored. And Jimmy goes on with the police. So I see the same script playing out, unfortunately, in FDC. Mm. DP had a, 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 a period for them they, they it was a shorter period of police mm. when the mao announced takeover then the party said no we are throwing you out mm. police took over the period got us mm. until when they were subdued i'm told he got it's it's real and substantiated yeah he got more money tried to compromise the members of nek and the rest yeah and and then police left for them they are like poli- i don't think police has ever left you to see mm. the, the, the uganda house well but even it today is... mao moves with it when he's going to the but but, but but uh, yeah as a minister is entitled but doctor to i mean uh, the police like major pola said i'm i'm coming to that yes so what major pola says the, and indeed mm. the constitutional mandate of, of the police is yes. people and order yes But if police was at at Najanankumbi to keep law and order mm. why was Bilgwa who is a party chairman blocked from accessing his office he has an office at FDC headquarters why mm. was he blocked for about four hours mm. when he entered why is he held a hostage in the headquarters mm. so what law and order are they keeping in courts Mm. What law and order are they keeping? Mm. Why is Ambassador Abirugwa making distress calls when UPC, when Najana Kumbi is surrounded by police? Mm. <coughs> so there is a certain law and order in courts that they are supervising mm. in favor of their money. I, and I think today, whereas from Monday I had doubt as to what each side was uh, arranging, mm. today the picture is clear. Mm. The events uh, uh, surrounding uh, Ambassador Virgwas predicament at uh, at Najanankum have created the air 
as of what is happening. Indeed, police was there as early as 8 a.m. in the morning. Mm. So what if you are keeping law and order? This is a known public figure. Mm. Ambassador Virgo was a mayor of Kampala. Mm. He has been an ambassador in NRA. So you cannot say that we don't know this person. Yes. He's a known chairman of FDC. Mm. You are there to keep law and order. Why are thugs beating journalists? Mm. What order are you keeping? Mm. Under your watch. So you have Ambassador Virgo, he's stuck outside for hours. Yeah. You they open for him. They uh, uh Patrick Amuria took him to receive him, grabs his documents, mm. they take him in the room, and he's heard crying for help mm. on the phone, making distress calls. But there are more than three pickups of police. Mm. So what law and order are they keeping? You have journalists being beaten by, by Kanyamas. What law and order are you keeping? Mm. What order are you keeping? Is that order? Uh, so they are just uh, supervising uh, their money. The implementation of their money and the deliverables. Unfortunately, mm. amidst a constrained political environment in this country, we mm. have partisan security forces. Unfortunately. Mm. And as the sky clears, as day and night comes and goes, it will go down in history. Mm. That are the biggest confusers of this country mm. are the men in uniform. Very unprincipled, very partisan. Unfortunately, they are very educated. Mm. So they cannot even claim ignorance. Very educated. Mm. But we have what Dr. Sengendo at one time called educated fools. Mm. They are always very clear. On what the functions of police are mm. to the citizens of this country? Mm. What are the functions of the army are to the citizens of this country? I think anybody joining the army, there is an education minimum. People joining the army. I think you mm. must have at least completed senior pool. Meaning you can read and write. Mm. So what officers were grabbing and about staffing things in Oyam? And they educated fools? Mm. What am I where I beating people in Suruti? What am I killing the people in Kambar? Mm. They are doing a big disservice to this country, and unfortunately, we shall all pay the price. Nobody will be spared. Interesting. Uh, Major Paula, I think it's one of the hardships of inch and uh, that uh, someone could also claim is that. Is you you have the you have a regime which is in power, but you also have the state and the government, and so sometimes they are bundled up on you because of your status as an incumbent. No, no, no. You see, that's part of state capture. You have a regime in power because NRM has a no, right I'm to play I'm, politics, right? I'm, I'm coming. Let me, let me explain it. Mm. <laughs> a regime does not own state institutions yes. in a democratic country. Mm. It is only in a dictatorship. Yes. Where, for example, UPDF, we have been saying this country is a dictatorship, and mm. people think we are alarmists. UPDF conducts its affairs like a military wing of NRM. Mm. It does not conduct itself like a national army. So previously, in the post-independence Uganda, we have had a situation where armies come and go with the regimes. Mm. So you have Obote 1, Obote 2. So the army was stayed for mm, a while. Mm. It was disbanded after a vessel of, of Obote 2. Mm. Then say from the bush, let's create a new army, a national army, a, a, the creation of a UPDF act, mm. a move away from the name NRA to UPDF. Mm. People thought they were creating a national army that would now be permanent, mm. serve governments to come and go. Like we see in Kenya, Tanzania, and all other countries. Mm. But unfortunately, this army is also like, like the other armies. There is no difference. Mm. Unfortunately, the other armies could claim elements of ignorance mm. because they were not highly educated. Yes. UPDF is highly educated. That's why I'm saying that at the end of the day, they have not shown any difference mm. as to the value of education. Yeah. They are the same regime. They are a regime army. Thank you very much. And we'll get back to that. Only. Yes. Yes. Uh, doctor, mm. 
we would like to hear your, your reflections on what yes. other panelists have said. But also, <clears throat> there's one thing I, I need you to address. Everyone, I mean, in the case of, of, of DP, uh, starting from Akena, people fight him, they say he got money. Uh, DP, the people fight Mao, they say he got money. Mm. FDC people are fighting Nandala and uh, Amuria, saying they got money. Mm. Why don't people with the same energy attack the giver of the money? Mm. Is is he immune from this, or are his, are his, is his record just way beyond? You know, I wanted to address that. That, that and, yes, uh, but then also also the reflections. reflections. Yes, yeah, but, you know, it's difficult after three lawyers with mm. the political knowledge and experience. Yes speak about a subject that you will be left with anything to say. Yes. But being a citizen, an informed public, I yes. may have one or two things to yes. say. I'll start from what Council Mugisha? Yes. Bia Mugisha. former president, uh, presidential candidate, FDC, uh, started from the, 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 the crisis of leadership in FDC once Dr. Bessie left. If, if you didn't know, I was actually one of those approached by the youth. And when I was approached to become FDC uh, presidential candidate, mm. I even called my wife and said, my friend, we are about to... State House is here. Yeah. State House, I, I began to imagine the, which wing, mm. which wing of, of you, are, you are going to have that. Anyway. Uh, I'm serious, although I brought it as a joke. Yeah. And I had to go and consult. Actually, I consulted Dr. Bessie. Yeah. I said, why are you not running? Mm. By the time they come to an Obuku, mm. who has no party card, mm. who has never, you know, campaigned for FDC, mm. uh, then the, the, the situation was dire. And therefore, it's not surprising mm. that we are seeing what we are seeing. Because the preparation of transition Mm. Across the board, mm. has not happened. Talk about political transition in the NRM. Talk about the civil service. Mm. Someone who has had a very good job for 20 years, 10 mm. years, earning 50 million. When it comes to retirement, doesn't want to retire. Mm. And the head of state will add even four years. Mm. Let's go to the private sector. How many businesses have you seen mm. transitioning the leadership in the private sector? Mm. Okay, let's even go to the religious Murana. area. Murana's children have taken over. So, you know, civil service, the army, perhaps the army, yes. there we have seen it. Yes. In, in, below, the, of course, the head of state. Okay. Mm. And that is the leadership crisis the country is facing. Yes. As I was coming here, I read the TikTok, uh, you know, these new Chinese phones. Mm. They have these apps which send you news. And I was cap captivated by one article where someone called Sobi. Mm. Sobi is a criminal gang leader. Yes. Who was supporting ISO. I think the case was about a court, a court oh, award yes, yes, to, yes. to be punished or to mm. pay 170 million. And then I read his story down about, you know, how ISO arrested someone and they are being punished. And then, you know, I got this part of Sobi saying he's going to run for mayor, mm. Kampala. Oh. And the reason is... Sobi is the HFSI... Yeah, oh. uh, yes, yes, he's uh, one of those leaders. Mm. So he, 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 he said two things which captured me. He said, yeah. one, if Bobby Wine could do it, mm. why, why not me? But the most important was the second. He said, we've been trusting doctors, lawyers, and engineers to cause the socioeconomic transformation. Mm. But they have left us down, and they are enriching themselves. Mm. They are in need for themselves. And we, the ordinary people, are just suffering. We don't change. Yes. And for me, I think this is the message across the board mm. in this struggle. Nandala Mafabi was boasting of $20,000 a month and this kind of thing. Mm. Money is at play, engineer, engineer who? Engineer poor. And all these elites mm. are boxing themselves. But the common man mm. is not in the discussion. Okay? It's not in the discussion. And for me, this is the crisis that has to be addressed mm. outside the NRM, outside, you know, whether it's a movement, whether it is a political parties. Mm. And I would like to say that the politics has actually failed. Mm. We are now seeing the side effects more than we see the actual 
uh, purpose of leadership in this country. So do you think the when change, you see, the let change me should come from down? Or? Yeah, when you see mm. parliament stuck and they are failing to deploy social services, medical interns, mm. but you are discussing LC1 elections, which are costing about the same money, mm. then we are really lost mm. as leaders of today. But I started from my last point. Let yes. me come from the historical yes. perspective. Mm. And I took down notes as I was reflecting just to you know emulate my able council here. Yes. Mm. You know, there has been an evolution of Africa in terms of its renaissance in leadership. Yes. We started with the pre-independence movement. We got our independence, isn't mm. it? Very good. So there was an outbreak of independence. You know, Ghana, Ethiopia, Uganda, so on. Until I think Zimbabwe, 1980, and South Africa, I think, mm. was the last. Maybe not Ethiopia. Okay? Mm. Mm. Ethiopia for some time was colonized, by the way. If you read the history very well. Mm. After that, there was now an outbreak of wars. That was the second wave. And coups, <coughs> you know, and Asha didn't work in seven. Who are the promising leader? Mm. But mm. wars were no longer sustainable. You could no longer use the gun. Mm. So there was now an outbreak of democracy. Mm. Isn't it? A democra elections, elections, elections. And for Uganda's case, the climax was in 2005, mm. where there was now an outbreak of electoral or mm. multi party politics. After 20 years, we are beginning to see us reaching a point where it is really not about elections, it's not about politics, it's not about leadership. Mm. It's about money. How much does a seat cost? Yes, you say it costs 3 million shillings to nominate. Mm. I am planning to run for office in mm. my constituency. Mm. And when I did a quick consultation among MPs from Lango Parliamentary Group, yes. I'm trying to run in Oyam South, mm. perhaps, you know, independent, UPC, NRM, whichever. Because mm. those are vehicles, really. And it is costing 300 million shillings. They're telling me, Obufu, whether you are, it's not about, actually one of them told me, it's not about being a doctor. Mm. <laughs> it's not about ideas. Mm. It's about money. Not even interests, common interests. Mm. It's not even about the institution. The institution is merely a vehicle. Doctor, you, yellow? you need the, 300 million. Yeah, they ask you, you yellow Dr. Obuku. And there was also Dr. Ibuk. Yes, mm. the book is my uh, answer. Same so constituency. Mm. Mm. So what we have begun to see is that we have reached a point where we are now having what's called diminishing returns. Mm. And you may be persuaded to go the movement way, but there have been advantages mm. of political parties. One, the ruling party grabs good ideas. Mm. And the threat of losing an election forces them to implement some ideas. I'll give you an example. Mm. The president was running in 2001. When Dr. Besige came, okay, under the so-called reform agenda, Okay, that contestation. It wasn't a registered party, I think, but, you know, it was equivalent. Yes. He quickly abolished user fees in hospitals. Mm. And all of a sudden, the poor were able to access. And graduated tax. Health service. And also graduated tax. Mm. And many other ideas, I'm sure, have come about. Mm. One of the, if you read the literature on the failure of democracy in Africa, yes. why is it that in Asia, mm. the tiger economies, they have sustained democracy and translated that force into an economic gain, economic dividend. Yes, yes. The challenge has been checks and balances. Mm. And these checks and balances are even within our parties. Let's take the NRM, for example. When it comes to the highest office, it's non-negotiable. It is a president for life. Mm. And other offices. Yes. Okay? And that removes the purpose of strengthening our democracy through checks and balances. Mm. Parliament should be able to check cabinet, okay? And the judiciary should be able to arbitrate in a certain way without these arms being strong and truly independent. Mm. Then we have a problem. But this should also happen in the political parties. Mm. And there has been a problem, as you can see. Uh, there is no organ which is able to check the two uh, vanguards Mm. Who, are, who are thought to have, uh, you know, got these bribes, okay? And the parties are now in disarray. Mm. But this was happening all along. I don't think uh, the, the institutions were built uh, very strongly. Mm. The other side effect is violence. I, I'm not sure, I wasn't very active or knowledgeable mm. in the previous elections between 1986 mm. and 1996. Mm. 
But right now, as we were talking here, kidnaps mm. are common. Isn't it? When the noop was coming about, they shot people. They said 54 a year, there were more. And this is some of the side effects of very competitive politics. It's mm. do or die. I have a gun. I kill you just because I need to be in office. Mm. And this presents a big challenge. Finally, is generally an appeal. You know, as, as, as political leaders, I'm, yes. I'm sure there is no doubt about it, as you use the term, say, just as sunrise comes before darkness, or darkness will come after sunrise. In about 40 years, we will be lucky if any of us is here. In about 20, the, you, you know the 1986 millionaires are now no longer there. Mm. The warriors, even his excellency, the president, he's got a life expectancy. Mm. So we need to begin to think seriously where we are taking this country. Mm. And we need to participate in a way that is pro, uh, is pro people. Because right now the examples we are giving out there is that of confusion. Mm. Look at the FDC. What do they stand for as an ideology? Yeah, I think up to 96, mm. that was the end of ideology. Up to 1996. Mm. From 1996 to date, we have just been on commercialization of politics. Who is winning? I talked to a colleague in the parliament recently. I said, but why are you not passing some of these laws? And he said, parliament has reached a state mm. where someone can say something is white and say it is blue. Mm. Just because it's on the other side of the divide. Mm. So we are beginning to see actually, uh, what should I say, um, a cancer. The politics of Uganda has reached a cancerous state. Mm. The state can no longer function. The state can no longer deliver its promises to the people mm. just because of political alignment and political correctness. And what you are seeing today, where the opposition is going to be totally, you know, annihilated, mm. then there is even going, not going to be checks and balances. Mm. People are in the same boat together to eat that cake and forget the ordinary social services, mm. health, education, and so on. We are all suffering as FDC is providing no alternatives. Yeah. No, you have seen those accusations coming. In fact, I saw a tweet mm. today that the, the, the same wave is going to hit Noop. So we are in a state of confusion in terms of mm. leadership. Yeah. And I think it's time for, it, time is ripe. There's a friend of mine called yoga, yoga Adola. Mm. Yo, yoga Adola keeps yeah. saying, time may be ripe. It's now 100 years for a revolution. Mm. <laughs> it's yeah. time is ripe for another force. <laughs> To come up and stabilize the country for perhaps mm. another 40 years. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doctor. And did, uh, did I do a bit of yes, yes. And, uh, <laughs> like and, uh, lawyer, and I'm I, going to law school. I think too. it's important to, to tell our viewers. <laughs> that, that we can't uh, go to I think it's school. important to tell uh, our dear citizens yeah. that cancer also has a, a cure and it can be managed. Mm. Yes, with it the can. Right doctors. You know, it may need radical surgery. When you mm. radical surgery, reduce the, it at uh, the right time. Yes, okay. but also you, you can prevent it. Yes, you can treat it. Some of them have treatment. Some can be prevented through immunization or vaccination. Mm. But when things where it has reached a big mass, which needs radical surgery, mm. you know what I mean. We need to look into uh, our radical surgery. Yes, yes. Yeah, there you have it from the doctor, <laughs> our, dear, our dear citizens. <laughs> and uh, that uh, brings us to the end of the first segment. Stay with us, and we will continue to discuss matters. Uh, coming from the big carry that we saw at FDC, but also the an upcoming topic that uh, we ought to dissect, which is, uh, is it okay for the army, the UPDF, to set up its own private security company? Thank you and stay with us. The Citizens Chatroom happens every Friday at 2 p.m. on Civic Space TV online on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to be part of this conversation. Civic Space TV, freedom always. Welcome back to the Citizen Chat Show with me, your host, Okot Ola. And today we are discussing the rift that we saw among the leaders or that we continue to see among the leaders of the Forum for Democratic Change. And as we wrap up the topic, we will also hop on another issue. That is the issue of uh, the Uganda People's Defense Forces setting up its own private security company where we'll have our very capable panelists dissect what these matters mean to you. Uh, thank you very much. And just to get straight to it and to wrap it up, uh, uh, Council Moses, mm. where, what are the likely scenarios that, uh, you know, we, we see a lot of fighting in between the leaders. On one side, we see Nandala and Amuriat, we see Semuju, and we see a lot of infighting, which never looks good. Uh, mm. At this point, I believe 
the members of FDC and the wider public uh, need to see some sort of leadership uh, from FDC. So what are the scenarios and how best can FDC learn from this problem? The whole of today, from morning when Waswabirigo was refused to enter the premises, we have been uh, trying to be to act with a lot of restraint mm. in uh, responding physically yes. to the challenge. Because yesterday there was an exchange of words and that is still playing in, in the minds of Ugandans. Mm. And we are trying to avoid the scenario where today we get an exchange of bros and fists. Mm. You see, now talking in terms of camps, our camp, uh, where, where Nanda Rasemu, I mean, where uh, the road mayor and Semuju and other leaders are, Mm. He's capable of mobilizing and uh, and physically going to the headquarters. Yes. Because the headquarters is here in Kampara. Mm. Semuju, Semuju has got uh, over one uh, half a million voters. Mm. If he wanted just 500, it is easy to get them. Mm. Road mayor just needs to go there and call. So we, we, we could have responded. No, 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 no. Mm. We could have responded physically. Mm. To, to, the, to the issue of putting goons inside our headquarters and denying the chairman entry. But we thought that if we do that, it will expose us further. Ugandans already uh, have had enough of our exchanges. Mm. And so we've been trying to, ex to act with restraint. What is happening now is to try to monitor the situation and also negotiate the release. <laughs> yeah. mm. <laughs> to negotiate the release of our party chairman. Mm. Who since morning has been held in Comunicado? This is an elderly man. Yes. Uh, quite frankly, uh, at that age, he, he has a lot of health issues to deal with. Mm. But you put him in a room and rock him in mm. for the whole day. Mm. But where? There is an effort to have him restored. Yes. Now, we are hoping that the situation does not escalate. And that's why we are calculative in our actions. Mm. Of course, for them, they are, not, they are not acting with the restraint. They have released the notice that elections have to continue. Mm. We are also responding to that notice. But, 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 By not writing... You said the investigations. Yes, um, yes investigations are to do with money bribery. Oh, oh. Yes. But now we are talking about the scenario at hand. Mm. Where our Is party the election a diversion from, from, from what's happening? The investigation no. and the money issue? No, the money... The money, the money investigation could go on mm. uh, even, even, even uh, for as long as there was an agreed roadmap yes. of the internal election. Yes. There is a money election factor. Yes. Th there, is, there, is a, there is the money saga, the money scandal. Mm. That is separate. It's something that happened three years ago in mm. the general election. Mm. The other challenge we have is an internal election mm. where we have not agreed on the roadmap. Mm. And uh, our colleagues in power uh, who are, are doing what uh, uh, ordinarily people call Tuvuga speed. Mm. They, they notice after the, after the other. Usually when FDC wants to, 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 to have grassroots structures, it, it, it avails party cards at the lowest level mm. in the communities. The purpose of availing membership cards is that it is, it's been five years when, since you last had an election. Mm you might be having new members who want to join. Yes. So avail party cards. When the party cards are given out, mm. moreover, our cards are annual. Let people buy party cards mm. to renew their membership. Mm. Then whoever get, renews membership, you enter him or her into the register. Mm. And those people who will be entered into the register can now, at an appropriate date, go on to conduct voting of your leaders amongst themselves. Yes. The disagreement we are having within the party is that Nandara and, Maf and, uh, and Amriel mm. reason that it is not appropriate to release party cards, mm. that uh, they should instead re send in registers mm. and our local leaders can just register people. But uh, they say that if we release party <coughs> cards, that they will be sold. Mm. But how do you put people in a member's, a member's role without be them being members? And yet we have a constitution that says 
one becomes a member by buying a, a party card. Mm. But anyway, we know why they are doing that. They are in charge. They, they, are, they are in power. So they feel they are in charge. And so they want, they, they, they want the process mm. that, that, that preserves them as office bearers. Mm. So anyway, we are trying to respond to that situation. Yes. We are mobilizing districts and our leaders. We are not mobilizing to go to attack Najana Gumbe. No, no, no. We don't want to give media mm. and, and necessary, uh, you know. <clears throat> we are simply mobilizing our leaders to and talking to them to understand the scenario at hand, to appreciate the danger of we going on with the roadmap that is questioned. Right now, as we speak here, there is a meeting going on in of Busoga and Bukedi leaders. Mm. It, it is happening in the Bujiri district. Mm. All delegates of those two sub-regions have met in the Bujiri district at the home of one of our leaders, and Dr. BCJ is addressing them as we talk now. And those are some of the issues he's trying to explain. So, so is, is, who, that is, we, who, we is try of, who is this voice of leadership, you know, trying to crack a path forward? Is it still Dr. Kiza BCJ? Yes, the... yesterday when he was talking, he said, I appeal to both camps, first of all, calm down, act with restraint, mm. and find a way of agreeing on moving together. Because an internal election, mm. if you start it without agreeing on the roadmap mm. to the end, mm. you expose yourselves to a possibility of cracking. We already had the crack that, that took away General Muntu and other colleagues who eventually formed the ant. Mm. And I think Ugandans are tired of new parties. New parties are not a solution. A solution is on forces of change organizing to remove the dictatorship that we face. Mm. And so, yes, the situation uh, seems uh, hopeless within the FDC and the, uh, at the headquarters in particular. But uh, these are our leaders that we put there. They did not, they did not come there by the gun. Mm. It is the people who voted them. Mm. And the same people will be mobilized to get them out. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, Major Pola. There was something raised in the first segment uh, about the burden of intubacy. Do you think sometimes NRM is judged too harshly simply because uh, it's in government? And of course, in government, you need you manage the police, you manage the prisons, you manage the army. And uh, because of this burden, uh, sheer playing of politics, which of course every party plays, uh, NRM is judged more harshly than others. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, of course, uh, the burden of incubacy plays against us. Mm. I've said it here before, mm. that when you talk of, say, violations in terms of human rights or torture, mm. I've repeatedly said that NRM as a party, mm. we are a victim, not a perpetrator. But people don't see this because oh, you are incumbent on of human rights violation. Mm. I have given a simple <laughs> example that even now, Noob T-shirt is red, put mm. red, NRM is yellow. Dress two people, put them in one area, tell them to walk. Mm. Who is more vulnerable mm. in one area? In a yellow T-shirt and a red T-shirt. They are paying back so what you taught them. We are victims. You have never seen a scenario where it is hard mm. that somebody in red was tortured by NRM, not even in Yamshus. We Instead, we have had a situation where a lady, a woman, was stripped naked because she was wearing yellow, in total disregard of the decency of a woman mm. and several of those. So here, the, the, the burden of income in cabins, we keep quiet. We are like a man being tortured by a but, wife. But they could also argue that. So you just you, have you, to you bear don't, the You don't beat people. People in yellow don't beat people because there are other people in green who do that, that work. That is not us. Mm. That is not us. So I am saying the burden of incumbency carries mm. on us. Mm. And we are now like a wife being beaten, uh, beating a man in marriage. Mm. But because you are the man, you suffer quietly. Mm. And that is suffering under the can income. I, can I ask a question? That is suffering in under the income. Let's have, let's have, in form yes. of information, mm. when, we are, when we are discussing programs mm. that are seemingly good, like parish development model, mm. a funder which is quick to own them. Mm. But when it comes to the aggressive side, 
mm. of the state where they are ruling party. Then he's trying to run away. Is he in order? Like which one have I run away? You, then the last show you told us PDM is an NRM, it's in your manifesto, you are implementing your manifesto. It's mm. your manifesto Isn't in power. It? So, Isn't it? so why don't you use the same talk? Mm. Say it's our manifesto in power and that manifesto includes human rights violation. Because mm. it's your same manifesto in power. Me, I am. I have given a clear example. Mm. I, I don't think uh, you have to intellectualize academize this thing. Mm. I have said, put two human beings, one in yellow, one in red, mm. drop in one day. See the vulnerability. Go back and say, where because else has NRM that? I'm trying to answer your question yes. of the burden of incumbency, yes. that we are being judged unfairly just mm. because the masses voted us, and the masses <laughs> have repeatedly voted for us. Mm. So that is it. So, uh, therefore, this burden of incumbency goes ahead to even bind us together mm. with the state apparatus, if that is what Sarah, Sarah meant. Mm. Like police wanting to maintain law and order in any given place. Mm. It is assumed, it is put on the incumbent. Mm. As a government, we have even gone as far as making a law mm. to say, if you're a policeman and you break somebody's leg, you are personally liable. The defense of attorney general no longer stands. Mm. We are trying as much as possible to say, work according to the law. Mm. So that you no longer go and say, yes, I broke the leg, but please sue attorney general. No, you are personally liable. Mm. But all this is blamed because of the incumbency. So the burden is high. Now, this brings me to the, uh, uh, the issue of uh, still in Najinankum. Mm. I like to categorically put it clear that whatever about the locking of the gates, about the rest of Birigwa, about all this, this NRM is out of mm. it. Because for us, we want a fair competition. Mm. So conflicts inside a party is not our affair. You just we threw wish, the money. We <clears throat> wish them well. You threw yes. the money like uh, a And to close well. this topic, mm. uh, we wish you're, them all, well. you're all experts at, at governance, given your previous um, experience. But what what advice do you have for the FPC uh, as a sister party going through this situation and how it can get out of it? No, my advice to FDC is that they have a constitution. Mm. They and I'm sure they have not had a looked at it thoroughly, but I'm sure their constitution is holistic. Yes, in a way that it encompasses it encompasses uh, conflict resolutions. Yes, they should abide by their constitution look into conflict resolution mechanism yes. and resolve it amicably so that we have a, a strong party. Strong. Because yes. for us, a party that is checking on us, mm. we definitely know we're a strong party, mm. we're a mass party, mm. we are everywhere in the country, yeah. we have the support of the people, the people will vote us. Mm. But it will not do us good if we don't have a credible party yeah. to check what we are doing. So we wish them well. So they should look into their constitution. My advice is they should look into their constitution, see thoroughly, especially over conflict resolution issues, yeah. so that they resolve and their party is strong. Thank you. And very then much. we meet in the field. No, but thank perhaps you very much. And, and, and I just just I will get to you. Um, what advice, you know, from a governance perspective, you know, would you give to the, the leaders within FPC in this moment and how to go about it? For me, really, it's unfortunate that uh, that the party president and secretary general have really mm. behaved the way they have. They've gone rogue. Yes. Like lock up the headquarters. Mm. Lock up to the chairman. Mm. After you've opened for him, after pressure, uh, lock him in his office. Mm. Like what? Like what are they thinking? Mm. I I didn't expect them to degenerate to that extent. Do you think it's a case of becoming what you're trying to fight? No, it's not even a case of becoming what. You see, if I I know that there is a study that, uh, and we have a doctor here that mm. if 14 million Ugandans are mad, this is madness. Mm. And, and you, you might need to check their mental state. Mm. Like, how do you do that? Mm. 
when they were talking, they, they were condemning mm. the spokesperson for having convened the meeting mm. in Isambi. That we have our party here, why don't you come here? Mm. They were challenging him. Then the chairman goes to his office to try to resolve the crisis, mm. and they treat him like that. So how would they have treated Zemuju? Mm. And they indeed confirming what the spokesperson was saying. Mm. And, and they might think they are not meant that okay. Like I don't see why a leader should do such a thing. I think there's something wrong with their heads. They, they are meant to start. Advice. And maybe they are not fit. To, to so they should fight. go to Butabik. That is the advice. Your advice <coughs> is going to Butabik. My, my advice is that <laughs> analyzing their conduct, mm. maybe they are not fit to mm. find those offices. Mm. Uh, and maybe the doctor will tell us in his conclusions yeah. what is the impact of yeah. these 40 million. And that's the adults. Mm. Especially given that 45% of our population are children. Mm. What is the impact of these 14 million mad people? And what do we do? Because even on the panel, you could find. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps, you know, yeah. the, the, uh, doctor, the, over I, think, to you. I think that statistic is overpronounced. Mm. I think mental illness has categories. The mm. ones you call mad are uh, the severe type. Mm. And I think that that survey, I haven't read it, but I can suspect it was anything to do with even uh, anxiety disorders and stress, uh, even depression. stress, mild uh, depression mm. and so on, which, which, uh, we, we, which is important. You yes, know, during yes. the age limits debate, we were asked as doctors, and I remember I was playing a medical association to give mm. a comment. Medical. And among our submission was the mental state of the head of state should be checked prior to as part of the nomination. Mm. It's a very serious thing, by the way. We, we know heads of state who are actually mentally unwell, and they mm. were governing, killing people, and so on, in history, but also even in recent times. Mm. Uh, and that's an important uh, piece, which may not capture the news, but it's a fact. Yes. Yeah. I think, for me, I, I wouldn't be able to give advice. I'm, I've not been into politics long mm. enough to qualify. Yes. But what is obvious as a citizen is that there is no alternative government in the Wanti. Mm. In any case, the, the most prepared might be the standby generator. Mm. Okay? But otherwise, the opposition has been a farce. Mm. Mao disappeared. Now FDC is in wrangles of, of money. Mm. Which brings me to the next point. How we can we change... That one. Mm. The, the, you know, campaign financing, for as long as we don't solve the money problem, mm. look at primary school, Kampara parents and so on now. There are campaigns, posters. Mm. Uh, have you seen that? Mm. And who is financing that? The rich fathers who have got mm. money from NRM and so on. They are now transmitting that culture mm. of father, a, 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 a father doing what? Father entrenching commercialization of politics, even for just... Not even head prefect, just for class prefect. Mm. And that's a problem we need to solve. Yes. One time I, I challenged the leader, I said, now if we cannot, how can we change the situation? And an experience which was clear was for Dr. Besige. Mm. Remember a time when he was campaigning and he wasn't spending. Mm. He was actually receiving. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I borrowed that for my campaign. And when I was running for MP for workers, doctors, nurses, and so on. They raised me about 60 million shillings, mm. which I used to educate the workers mm. on their rights. You know, that time there was a challenge of COVID, you know, mm. workers' rights and so on, and how to go about compensation and so on. Yeah. But that was not good enough. So it's, a, it's something that must change uh, over time. Finally, yes. someone thought this is, you know, wise men from the East mm. finding their turn to to rule in that party mm. and the, the banking, the Western group. I don't know how that stands politically because mm. interests and our interests align along tribes, along mm. clans. Mm. We can't rule that out. That they have said, you know what, this yes. election might remove us. We yes. have just entered. Easterners have never it's seen this thing. Is, eh? It's our time to govern. Mm. So that may not be uh, something small to ignore. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I know it's. Uh, very, it's been a very interesting discussion. We have to move on uh, as experts in governance. There are many issues to deal with. I hope Moses will be able to participate in further discussions uh, given the emotional state of the situation at, uh, at Forum for Democratic Change. But our dear citizens, as you might have noticed, uh, there was an issue in Parliament 
uh, with the uh, Uganda People's <coughs> Defense Forces under the National Enterprise Corporation, uh, led by General Mujira, setting up uh, a private enterprise, uh, security enterprise company that I think they issued out 85, uh, you know, people, uh, security operatives to start with. Um, the defense, of course, was that uh, this is nothing to do with the UPDF. And, uh, of, and the other thing was that it's important for critical state infrastructure. But uh, I'd like to start from, from you, Dr. Sarah Birete. Is it constitutional to start with uh, that the UPDF sets up a private company? And what are the implications, uh, you know, for such an act? Not a, I mean, the NEC has been existing, but a private security company. Oh, well, if you go to our national objectives and directives of state policy, objectives 4 and 13, clear the state, the mandate of the state mm. to protect the territorial integrity of Uganda, mm. the property and lives of Ugandans, <clears throat> the natural resources, mm. And the riches of Uganda as a nation. Yes. When you come to Article 208 yes. to 2010, yes. it specifies, establishes a national army mm. known as the Uganda People's oh. Defense Forces. Yes. Article 209 clearly stipulates the functions of the, the UPDF. Mm. And the Article 2010 says Parliament will direct the, the, the implementation of the functions of UPDF. Mm. The National Enterprise Corporation, NEC, mm. was set up in 1989 yes. under the NEC Act, Act uh, Chapter 310, yes. the Laws of Uganda. Yeah. That was before the promulgation mm. of the Constitution. In the NEC Act, Section 3 stipulates the functions mm. of, of, of NEC. Yes. Among those functions, the activities that NEC can conduct mm. are clearly laid out. And maybe for the benefit of viewers, I could read them out. Yes. Because I know that the people are hiding behind that. Mm thinking that a neck has power to do what they want to do. Mm. And these are the functions. To acquire these, hold, enjoy any property, sell, or let otherwise dispose of property. This is mainly real estate. Mm. Manage, develop, let, hire, buy, subscribe, or otherwise acquire, sell, dispose, or otherwise deal in immovable and movable property. Take over, acquire shareholding in any company and establish subsidiary companies. Mm. Engage in agriculture, agricultural produce and processing. Purchase, dispose of the same. Mm. Establish, maintain factories and similar establishments for the production of textiles, hardware, electric materials, timber, woodworks and other factory products. Mm. Engage in business of transportation and motor assembly. Engage in production of chemicals. For polymers, pharmaceutical products, and related products. Build, purchase business premises in furtherance of the functions. Mm. Establish, maintain offices in Uganda and abroad. Cut out to research in relation to any functions of national defense. Mm. This is the NEC Act. Yes. Where does it empower anybody to establish a private security company? Nowhere. But says the concept and of subsidiaries. This, yeah, but subsidiaries related to agriculture, textiles, and other. Mm. I think it's important to note mm. that the key mandate of the army mm. is to protect the territory integrity of this country, the life and property of Ugandans. Mm. It's clearly stated in the constitution. Mm. So when you try... This is Article 208. For yes. the benefit of you, as I know it's taking time, maybe I could read 209 on the functions. Yes, yes. The functions of Uganda People's Defense Forces are to preserve and defend the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Uganda, mm. to cooperate with civilian authority in emergency situa situations in cases of natural disasters, mm. to, 
to foster harmony and understanding between defense forces and citizens. Mm. D, engage in productive activities for the development of Uganda. Mm. D is what operationalizes NEC. the functions I've read for NEC. Mm. Where does it state that the UPDF can privatize their mandate of security mm. given to them through the constitution? by the people of Uganda. Mm. I saw the comments of General Mujira saying that even UPDF can hire us. To me, can hire the private <laughs> the security. <laughs> then, to me, that was the Kira. Mm. Then in the video <laughs> explanation, he said, we shall safeguard, mm. you know, prime installations like the pipeline. Yes. But the objective of the constitution says, the state, must secure our resources, including natural resources, oil and others. Mm. So isn't the pipeline a, natural, a national resource? Why should it be secured mm. by, by, by private armies? And as far as I conclude, I am convinced, legally and otherwise, that it is illegal mm. for NEC to try to create a direct conflict with their pro constitutional mandate. Yes, I, I will uh, conclude with a remarks, uh, a rebuttal on what Brigadier General Mujira said, mm. which is misleading the public. He did say that this private security company can protect VIPs, mm. can, uh, you know, protect our important installations, mm. and can also be used for hire mm. as and when necessary. You, you know, the world is just recovering from the shock mm. of the Wagner mafias in Russia, mm. which is a private army for, for Putin. But yes. we also have the crisis in Sudan mm. that is caused by a similar arrangements mm -hmm. of playing around with a, a, a man, national mandate of the army. Mm -hmm. So this is really setting up Uganda for chaos. And I want to assert to the provisions of the law that I have read mm. that there is no provision of the law for such thing. It is illegal. It is unconstitutional. And I want to invite Ugandans to challenge this thuggery in courts of law. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, doctor, Yes. what are your reflections? When you see our army mm. setting up training and setting up a private security company. I'm just wondering why the moderator asked me for reflections and mm. not expert opinion. Okay. <laughs> but, I'm going to go to law school so that he's confident that I can respond appropriately without reciting any article or act or chapter. Yes. Now, you know in 2001 and 2006, mm. one of the reasons the head of state and then mm. proposed or promised uh, for the election was mm. to modernize the army. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's the recent history. Yes. But the past history, we have a head of state who, for his industrial training at, Maki, at, at Dar es Salaam University, went for, oh, his internship. Mm. Uh, you know, internship is not a problem, medical mm. internship. He went to Mozambique to fight. Yes. For NASA and all this kind of thing. So the idea of UPDF being a mercenary army, and we were having this debate with some colleagues mm. who are medical, is that UPDF is actually a mercenary army. Mm. That weekend when Wagner was taking over uh, Russia. Mm. And examples are, are, are plenty. Mm. The founder of UPDF was a mercenary. Mm. Although slightly different because <coughs> that was an ideological war, isn't it? Yes. Perhaps it wasn't for money. He formed his army and in 1986 took over power. Mm. He didn't stop there. When the global war on terror started, sorry, he actually had mercenaries mm. in his army. They were Rwandan refugees who, after fulfilling the mission, again, I think it was a, an agreement. It may mm. not have been money, but help me, then I will help you. Mm. So the, the, the aspect of mercenary remains, <coughs> is, is, is part of the DNA of UPDF. But, but it could be debated because the part of the core of NRA was not only to liberate Uganda, but say Pan African force exporting. Uh, let, let, let me continue. Ideas, let me continue. I'm, 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 uh, you have just asked me the question at the right time. Yes. Enter global war on terror. Mm. You know what is happening? 
exporting our soldiers to to, to Somalia. Somalia for some pay. If you talk to a soldier, they will tell you that Somalia mm. is a hundred million shillings mm. you come back with after mm. the mission. Mm. And then Chad is very difficult. You come back with 300 million shillings. Mm. So you can see what that means. There is already commercialization of the army. In between, there was that Congo issue. Mm. It was a matter of the army going to plunder. We may call it different things, mm. but actually there has always been a, a, a motive for financial gain for some of the commanders. Mm. Okay, Some have been fighting truly for the benefit. So let me, I just wanted to underscore the fact that okay. the, the, that being a mercenary army is in the DNA mm. of UPDF. I'm not surprised by this uh, a pronouncement from NEC and uh, General Mujira. Mm. It is just that they are now formalizing what they have been doing. And for me, I think that is better. In my view, no lawyer, I mm. think that is better. And there are new opportunities being presented mm. with all these wars all over the place. Mm. Okay? Maybe UPDF and the government should look for alternative ways of raising resources. Mm. The sad story, of course, is that when this money is made, it does not perhaps trickle down to the common soldier. Mm. After 40 years, okay, as the NRA transitioned to UPDF, Mama Ingia Poli, you know Mama Ingia Poli? Are you no, no, no. Those, those houses. Those huts, eh? mm. you see, mm. oh, grass yes. huts, the military, should not be a story except in operational areas. Mm. Being a soldier, you should be proud to be a soldier, just mm. as it were to be a doctor and a teacher. Speak to any soldier who is carrying the gun, and they will tell you. We should be able to say, use this money, because mm. I, I, I saw an opportunity, for example, in, the, in the Ukraine. You see what I mean? And mm. all these other wars. By the way, if you look at the future of the army, that is the direction. Mm. The U.S. Army has not been fighting with only its ordinary citizens, they recruit. This mm. black water and all these others in, in Iran and Korea and where. Yes, that's okay? true. So, and the UPDF is moving fast. And mm. I think they should embrace these opportunities within the law so that the, the, the Sarahs here are satisfied. Housing, education, and health, mm. the welfare of the common soldier should be considered in all of this. That money should make a difference. Mm. Finally, what am I saying? We are having 1,100 doctors who have graduated. Mm. and the government is failing to deploy them. Mm. Training a doctor costs about 50 million shillings. Training a soldier, I'm sure it's something also substantive. Yes. I was calculating that those 1,000 is about 50 billion. Mm. Lowest cost, it can be anywhere at 500 billion economic. Yes. Economic cost or economic opportunity, mm. which is over $150 million. Government can get these doctors, deploy them. Mm. Start a private company, deploy them. North America now needs doctors like nothing. These countries are having aging populations mm. without doctors. In the similar but breath. We don't have enough doctors. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me show you the full circle. Mm. That will attract money in the term form of repatriations, and we can even hire and pay doctors here. The same thing can happen in the military. I see opportunity. Mm. Because. To work as a mercenary? Yes, I see opportunity. <laughs> yes. Where. Mm. Actually, government can generate <laughs> money, can generate revenue. It has been doing so. Put Let me finish. Has put under siege it, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it has been doing so. <laughs> in Somalia, in Central African Republic, we are hearing all those stories. But that money is not seen when perhaps you go to see the welfare <laughs> of the common soldier. Mm. It's the same appetite of government generating money and it goes into politics into FDC instead of so perhaps the building get center. more mercenary yes. opportunities. Yes. <laughs> this is the, the, the direction. It is mm. happening in the modern armies. Yes. Wagner in the in Russia, mm. in in USA it has smaller, smaller groups. Mm. You know, they send them out there and, and you know they are contracting. Mm. And this is really the, the direction they should take. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. That, that's my honest view. Mm. Thank you very much. And I remember in law when we joined Makere Law School, the first thing they would give you was a list of the only 20 people who have ever got first classes. And uh, General Mujira is, is a man. <laughs> Chibi Makubuya had set up a record yeah. that was unbeaten for about 20 years. Mm. 
But his performance as other Tony general, general was the most wanting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, on to uh, Council, uh, Council Moses. We, you know, we, we have this issue with, uh, you know, our government forming a private security company under the UPDF. Uh, what, what, do, what oversight can you add to that? Do you think it's a, a legal move or do you think it's... I think, to begin with, the first challenge that I see, like uh, my colleagues uh, highlighted, mm. are constitutional uh, considerations on, in their actions. Mm. Because for them to say that the National Enterprise Corporation is the one that is opening up a private company, offer security and they are even talking of that they will be securing government parastatos and, and installations and what have you. And VIPs. And VIPs is a complete, apart from it having constitutional issues, but it is also a complete vote of no confidence into other established entities like the Uganda police that was because uh, they are the ones that have been providing security in some of those areas, in uh, some of those offices some of the VIPs. So when they say we have, uh, we need a private security to do that, it is a vote of no confidence. But, but maybe, Into some it's, of maybe the... it's economic. Maybe it's cheaper. Uh, first of all, it's, it removes some amount of money that government has to spend on VIPs and all the protection of all these units. Two, mm -hmm. because the private company, it's rated on performance. So it even performs better. Maybe. Uh, but who will pay? Uh, could it be motivated by the recent shootings? No. Now maybe <laughs> I'm uh, just saying there yeah? could be other reasons. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just thought I have not it. I have not looked at it in that angle. But yes. the other observation I wanted to make mm. is uh, I think we have to be very careful when we are establishing private armies. The example of Wagner, but also the example of the rapid support forces mm. Sudan. of Sudan. Mm. Because the rapid support forces had been established by Bashir. and financed by Bashir mm. to fight in Chad. Mm. Mm. The, the Janjaweed, wasn't it Chad? No, Dafur. Yes, Dafur. Yes, Dafur. Dafur. Yes, Dafur. Which is part of Sudan, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. Dafur. To, to, to fight it's in... like establishing a private force to fight mm. ADF. Aha. Uh -huh. that, that, that would be so that's what like happened. That. Mm. Now, uh, and of course, it means that they get advantage over other private security companies mm -hmm. because for them they are working directly with the state. It means that even those people will be trained on the state budget, you know. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the taxpayer bears the, burden. bears the burden of establishing such a force and sustaining it, even when the money from that, uh, that, those, th 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 that work doesn't end up in the, in the national state coffers per se. Yeah. And, no. and already the taxpayer is paying the police and the army. Yes. To do that, they are constitutional. Exactly. But the, the worst part is that at the end of the day, that force will be a burden for us as a country. When the Mujiras have already gone. The rapid support <laughs> force. <laughs> Council Moses and, 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 when they have gone and Dr. Where? Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> what you say? I know. Council, I, I mean, isn't this, isn't this already yeah. happening with... Uh, because I remember SFC was introduced as... It had another name, a, guard, a presidential guard, guard brigade. brigade. Yes. But now it's uh, almost having 10, almost ten thousand soldiers, you know, with the duty of guarding uh, the, you the, know, the, installations. the president and installations. Yes, it's a duplication of roles, but uh, this is basically selfish. Mm. What they are doing is basically selfish. Selfish as, uh, as, as an army, but also as officers that are involved in it. Yes. Because they will directly benefit. But for me, I wanted to conclude my point of these people, that company, those people will end up being a burden for us as a country. Mm. When the Mujiras and the Musevenis are not here anymore. Mm. They are establishing them. They are going to, uh, to, 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 to you know, establishing, establishing them on the taxpayers' uh, money. Mm. But at the end of the day, for those who they are fighting, perhaps when they are over, they will come to fight here. Mm -hmm. You will find those are the people they are using. Because when they used the Chiboko squad against us, 
if they had that army, mm. they would have used it. So for public relations, they will pull back police, pull back the army, mm. so that they are not seen to be the ones beating you. You remember we have a, we had a minister here who said the people who were hammering uh, journalists mm. uh, and uh, brutalizing Ugandans mm. uh, that maybe it was an army from nice. Nigeria yes. or something. Mm. And it's possible. Yes. So now, by the time a minister says that people are putting on UPD for uniform, that's, isn't that the minister uh, who was shot, by the way? By, yeah. uh, my senior brother. <laughs> mm. the by the time someone says that the people in UPD uniform are actually a, a, a mercenary force mm. <laughs> beating Ugandans on Kampara Road, mm. what would happen when there's actually a mercenary force? Mm. Which, which is not subject to these laws. And not accountable. And not accountable to anyone. So, well, we are dealing with all those are signs, uh, all those are consequences of the dictatorship that we face. Mm. And uh, the solution remains the same. The earlier we remove the dictatorship, the better. All right, thank you very much. Um, oh. Major Paula. But now the dictatorship <laughs> removal. On this issue. The quota is pin under is, under is under attack yeah. by <laughs> the dictator. Major Paula, on this issue, you find yourself in an intersection of expertise. You're both a lawyer and a security. You know, well, well, well. But, no. but then we, um, I think a, a key principle that comes out is that of state building. That to build a strong state, violence must be monopolized, and and of course checked through democracy. But now we saw NRM in you know we could call it first half, doing so well to monopolize and professionalize monopolize violence and professionalize the army. Now we are seeing we first saw a split. Um, I believe. The common perception is that the SFC is a special army, and then there's the main army. Now we are seeing a small Regular. security. To an extent that sometimes when there are beatings, you hear some, uh, even members of security saying, we don't know who, who did that. So do you think it's responsible for, for, for government to then add that, uh, you know, this security company to this? Uh, now, this topic is quite intriguing. Mm. First of all, you started by mentioning the person of Mujira mm. <laughs> uh, as a general and a first class holder. Yes. So I find myself conflicted in many ways, a conflict of interest, because mm. uh, Mujira went through my beloved school. Yes. I went through the same. Mujira is an OB of the Great Interi School. Yes. I also went through the Great Interi School. So I find really difficult to. To believe that my OB did not think rightly. Mm. Of course, he's a first class holder <laughs> and he's a very brilliant guy. Even in entire his records are glaring. Mm. He could have become a doctor or an engineer or anything, but he chose to be a lawyer. And that's why I got a first class in Makere. Mm. Now, um, so I, I really have confidence that whatever it does, he thinks over it again and again. Mm. Now, this matter is so legalistic. Mm that uh, I am tempted to think that laws are not interpreted outside court. Now, if you're a lawyer, you say your opinion, or you say something outside court, mm. it's your opinion. Yes. Uh, even Attorney General, mm. when he tells the president something, or government, it is called Attorney General's opinion. Yes. Because it is outside court. So I think that Somebody may have to get an interpretation because it is so legalistic. Mm. Uh, and of course, when it comes to that stage, you know, our brilliant old boy mm. will uh, explain his position mm. in the way of affidavit. I know he will be made to write an affidavit and I know he will draft a very clear paragraphs there too. Mm. Uh, hearing what Sarah says and also looking at the law, it looks like the functions of neck specified, not implied. Mm. Yeah. Because the debate is that NEC, as a corporate person, mm. is free to do business. Yes. And as long as, but I think in law there's business of legality and business which has Because legal. it's a government person. So, mm. uh, NEC, as a legal a corporate personality, is a living legal person and can do business. Mm. That is the argument from NEC and from my great OB in Jira. But then we have to think whether or not the law actually leaves open mm. or the law crystallizes the, the objective as read. Mm. 
Because if you go into this, somebody may say you are actually inferring or implying the functions when the law already provides specifically what yes. you are supposed to do. Mm. Yes. So that's why I'm saying laws are not impre- interpreted outside court. Mm. So that is what I was looking at. It. Uh, otherwise, as a legal person, it has a, a right to do business. Uh, do, so they are doing it. But as to whether this falls within the ambit, it's a question that needs uh, scrutiny. Mm. And if somebody argues that you're doing that, but the, road, the law provides you your real function, so why are you inferring or implying? Mm. So you are implying it could be way outside the law. Yes. Uh, doctor talks about uh, his other view of the business, uh, where the army could do. But uh, we also note that NRM is a revolutionary army, mm. and I think it would de- desist from being Doing machinery work mm. because the history and the building of NRM is a revolutionary army pro people army and should stick to that. Mm. And uh, it will not, if it would, in my opinion, what, what do you say about out. the NRM's missions yeah. out, of, out of the country? The NRM vision because is those actually, are cited as mercenary missions. Yeah, the NRM well. vision, you know, I'm talking missions, from missions, the, missions talking from, from the party perspective. Mm. One of our core principles as a party is pan Africanism. Mm. As NRM, yes. democracy, what pan Africa. So all this that we have been doing is to think that it's not enough for us to sleep when there's problem in Somalia. South, Somalia. Mm. South Africa, during its struggle, mm. we really put in a lot. There was a time when the South African white regime had threatened all frontline states. Should you keep these South African rivals, we shall bomb you. Indeed, they bombed the Zambian conference center, mm. like a Serena here. Mm. And therefore, Museveni offered to say, bring them here, we shall co- continue. And South African regime threatened to bomb State House. Mm. In a heated cabinet meeting, Adok Nekyon, who was Minister of Health, and Semu Guerrero, who was Minister of Foreign Affairs, argued that Museveni should remove these people from Kawaweta. Mm. It was Kategaya and Kiruna Kivija in cabinet who said, no, we have to die with our Pan Africanism. Mm. And the rest is history. We trained them, recruited, we harmed them, took them back. We liberated them. So this Pan-African spirit has been going on. Mm. And I think it is in that dimension that we do it, not for financial gain. But of course, they are paid. Mm. Uh, <laughs> they, are, they are paid like any other person. Yeah. No money, they uh, say, is next to oxygen. Mm. So, so uh, it is that. Now, the they, they, they other organs of the army that we have, like branches and all this, yes. or having a, a SCPC, is right and fitting even in other jurisdictions. The mm. protection of the head of state forms a unit. And for the case of Museveni, it was for me then long ago. Yes. Even Bote had a, it was called PEO, I think. Mm. Bote was called PEO, Presidential Escort Unit, or organi- unit, yeah, PEO. Mm. Bote was called PEO, President, was, which was commanded by Don Duha. Mm. Don Duha was a commander, and his wife is a deputy minister then, you know, Bote too. Mm. So these units exist. I'm not sure about the jurisdiction in Kenya and Tanzania, but I'm sure they are there. And then military police is different for law and order within the army. Mm. And that's why they detain, they arrest, they do that, all that. So but also beating it's, it's, demonstrators. It's, it, it's not a, huh? well, no. no the, the beating <laughs> or the intervention in civil, civil activities is under the constitution which provides that police can call reinforcement. So whenever UPDF has been there, it is actually the duty of the police when the police feel that they are overwhelmed mm. for to maintain law and order. Mm. So civil, the military only comes in to kill. Um, and, uh, and it is stated in the constitution, Sarah knows it, mm. that to aid the civil authority, that is police, when they want it. So mm. otherwise it is not, pol- the army cannot go on a motion of its own. So the, the, the issue of whether or not NEC, uh, is legally as a corporate person right to do into the deal into business of security per se when it is actually in the ember of security? Yes, it's a quite a legalistic matter, and as I said, laws are not interpreted outside court. Yes, so it would interest us to have it synthesized and consume better for the benefit of Ugandans. But for now, as a legal person, they can argue yes, we are legal personality and we can do business. Mm. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, and I hope that uh, in conclusion you you support uh, the petition of Dr. 
Sarah Birete when she finally does. No, so I will much. swear I feel a bit to the other side. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I will. He's bound swear, by law. I will swear I feel a bit that yes. it's legally right to yes. do it. Yes. Uh, so I will. I will swear I feel a bit in support of my good OB. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, our dear viewers and the citizens of Uganda, it has been a beautiful deliberation today. We had discussion the issues to do with uh, FDC. Uh, we heard from Council Moses, but we also got, uh, you know, insights from every other member here uh, who I believe are governance experts in their own right, having held people, I mean, uh, consequential positions within the running of affairs in this country. And uh, we also had a discussion on the issues regarding the setting up of a private security company under the Uganda People's Defense Forces. It has been an amazing discussion. And uh, before we come to an end, today is a very special day. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start, but a very important day. I could say a, a public holiday for Civic Space TV. Uh, it's Dr. Sarah Birete's birthday. They say uh, you cannot ask the age, yeah. but <laughs> uh, we are really glad to, to have you. Slight above 26. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, women I mean, watch. They're like women watch. Yeah, all bad black. Yeah, I yeah, mean we are mentioned. we are honored to to have you here, and I think it's it's uh, amazing. I don't know if you have any wishes for. Yeah, I uh, wish Sarah a happy birthday. She's our voluntary lady, our wife, yeah. but also she keeps uh, checking us as a party. We are our toes. So happy birthday and live longer. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Your wishes. May God do for you what you deserve most. Thank you. Mine is to wish you a successful legal challenge of the UPDF <laughs> Wagner effect. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hopefully by your next birthday, there's a ruling yes. that you would like. Thank yes. you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a cake. Uh, yes. Someone. I hope it has not found its way to Nadja Nankumbi. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sarah. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Where's the candle? One at least for that. Thank you very much, our dear viewers, and uh, till next time with me, your host, Okot Ola.